Hello everyone, uh, Pam George here and today I'm going to continue reviewing Learning from a Stranger Chapter 3. The chapter is titled On Loving Foreigners. Here the chapter is introduced, introduces us to Luke chapter 10 verse 25 to 37. Here the, an expert in the law had asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Or the way Smith paraphrased it, reads, who are you saying is included in the people of God, the ones I should love? Instead of answering the scribe, Jesus tells a story of four people, two Jewish, one unknown, and a foreigner who was a Sam Samaritan. Through this story, Jesus answers his question. Basically, the scribe or expert of the law was asking, what are the boundary lines to loving people? Jesus used an example of a Samaritan who demonstrated showing mercy to a stranger to teach him who his neighbor was. Samaritans were considered outsiders. In fact, a quote in the chapter summarizes how they were viewed. Jewish writing from the centuries immediately before Christ reflect animosity towards Samaritans. One text refers to them as a group that is not really a nation, but merely those stupid people from Shechem. I'm sure the expert of the law was challenged by Jesus' answer. Jesus was removing strongholds and barriers that hindered these experts from experiencing God. Although they knew scripture, they were blind and were not able to understand some basic concepts. A quote that summarizes this chapter is found on page 63. It reads, It is no longer about classifying groups of people in terms of those who must be loved and those who need not be. It is about the person who acts like a neighbor. A theory that can explain the expert's behavior can be the social dominance theory by Levin, Prato, and Sidanus. The behavior and mindset of the expert of the law, the Levite, and the priest who walk to the other side can be explained by the social dominance theory. They had knowledge. They took pride in it and felt dominant. This dominance deceived them. Sidanus and Prato's framework called social dominance theory states that a dominant group exists in each society. The group receives privilege based on a relatively arbitrary value such as race, ethnicity, clan, or caste due to historical, economic, and political reasons specific to that context. In this case, case the expert in the law, the Levite or the priest, felt dominant due to the privilege or they, they had the hierarchy that they had been educated in the Torah. The theorist claimed that there's no innate or natural reason for such dominance to occur. No one social group is more capable or deserving than another. For example, the Jews were not any better than the Samaritans, but it happens, it always happens. It seemed to be something in our human nature. A scripture that can help us as we all navigate this dominance that we might feel towards others is found in Isaiah 57, 15. For thus says the high and lofty one, he who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, but with him also who is of a thoroughly penitent and humble heart, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the thoroughly penitent, bruised with sorrow for sin. Since social dominance is inevitable, our challenge is to recognize our bruised lives, beaten down by sin. We can identify the victim in the story that Jesus said, the victim who needed help. Then we would have the heart of a Samaritan in this story. So I want to end with this quote. If the scribe identifies with the beaten man, then he must humble himself. He must admit his own need see himself as lying lost and helpless, and step down from his pedestal in order to see the neighbor as one who may come to him with needed assistance. Thank you for listening. Here are some of the references I've used. I recommend the book Deep Diversity Between the Lines. Um, 
to give us more insight on uh, viewing people as the other. Thank you.